In this video, I'm going to be going over how you could execute terminal commands in Swift, specifically for the macOS platform. So recently, I ran into this use case where I had to use my Python packages and Python scripts in my macOS app in order to uh, do the stuff in my app. So you might be thinking, why did I even create this? Why is it practical? So some backstory over here. I came across this repo called Codeformer, which is basically a model that helps face restoration, basically unblurring the faces. And because this is written, like the script is written in Python, and I wanted to create, I mean recreate a GUI based on this repo and its use cases, I had to execute Python scripts over here. So that led to the question. I had to find a way to execute terminal commands in my app. And this is, this could actually yield a lot of future development and new ideas as it offers intuitive UI to users who are not familiar with specific terminal commands, such as this one. So basically offering a GUI or a UI, an app that simplifies the process of writing these lines of code. So let's get right into it. Let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a new Xcode project. Let's call this execute terminal command. Okay, next. And save. There we go. And over here, I'm going to just collapse this and zoom in there we go okay i'm gonna create a new file to start out with and this would be our main logic i'm gonna create a new swift file call this scripting all right and over here we want to create a new function called shell and what's unique about this is that it's going to be a, a discardable result discardable result. So what this is, is basically it's telling the Swift compiler that the return value of the function can be ignored by the caller, which means that you can choose to ignore the return value when you call this function without raising an error or warning. So yeah. <clears throat> and then we're going to have one parameter command and it's going to return a string. And the string, if it returns, it'll notify. If not, it won't do anything. And for our next line, we're gonna set the task to process. This is basically creating a new instance of the process class, which lets you uh, spawn and control new processes. And in our case, that is um, executing in terminal. Well, execute, executing shell commands. Okay, next up we have task.standard output is equal to pipe. And then task.standard error. So this is basically um, giving us the output and the standard error over here. Uh, yes, okay. And next up, we have arguments, C, and command. So what this basically does is it sets the arguments for the process, and the C flag over here tells the shell to read the command from the next argument. Okay, so that's cool. What's going on? Oh, standard output. Okay. Next is just launching, launch path. And we could set the path to bin slash zsh. So that's going to be the one I'm using. I'm not going to be using bash. So yeah, that's the one I'm going to be using. Next up, we have standard input, which is going to be nil because there's really no input required for the executed command. Last but not least, launch the task. Cool. 
And now we want to receive the data. So pipe dot file handle for reading. And then dot read data to end the file. So it's gonna basically read the output results after you execute the command. And over here, just to make sure that it's parsed into a string and make sure that it's in the right encoding format, which is gonna be our traditional UTF-8. Last but not least, return output. Cool. And let's go back to content view. So this is a very stripped down example. I'm just gonna create a button. When it's pressed, um, let's just give it a name of run commands. Okay, over here, I'm going to have for now just one command, which is gonna be, just gonna call it a function and then call Python version. Okay, what is the error? Oh, output. There we go. Okay, let me run it. Let me actually shrink it out so you could see the value. Huh, output. Oh, got a forced and wrap to make sure that the optional is for sure gonna be there. Okay, now we have a very basic um, window over here. Actually, let me do something here. Let me go back to content view, set the frame to be infinity. Because I don't really like the small, the small window, to be honest. There we go. Let me embed this into a VStack just in case I want to add anything more. Okay, let me run it again and see what we get. Okay, run. Cool. So it says, uh, failed, to, failed for data file, blah, 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 no such file or directory. Interesting. So what if we print it out? run command and you see that Python is the default Python version that we have here, which is not what we want because most people are, they have their own environment such as Anaconda and that's also my environment that I'm using. So obviously this is not gonna work. And as you can see here, it's a lot different if you go over here and type Python version because this is executing from the root. And over here, we're just going straight into Anaconda. If I say which Python, you can see that it's going to Anaconda. Well, this one uses the default Python version. <clears throat> okay, so to fix that, let's go back to our terminal and find our Python path. So I'm going to be using my Anaconda Python path. So let's replace Python with the path. Okay, that's good. And before you run it, go to your project targets and under signing and capabilities, you should see app sandbox. This is enabled as default upon creating a project, but for the sake of this, um, for the sake of what we're doing over here, we want to delete app sandbox. And also make sure that sometimes um, disable library validation is checked. You want to make sure that it is unchecked. Okay, so this is all set up. So now we can expect the Python version to display 3.9.7, which is our Python version here. Yeah, so because that's hooked up, we could actually start executing Python scripts or just tampering with terminal in our Mac OS app. So let's say um, 
I could also do a variety of stuff like um, have multiple commands on one shell line. So I could, for example, say cd to this path. So my users, and then what is my thing called? A nine seventy. Okay, yes. So my computer, my disk is called A nine seventy slash, and I have a folder called Code Former. And then I'm gonna use a semicolon over here, and then have a new line that does whatever. So basically, I could cd to this path and then add another command, ls, just list all, and see what we get. Okay, and there we go. We have basically all of the elements in that folder. So obviously, um, if you're going to be using Python scripts, I mean, if you're going to be running uh, terminal commands, you want this to be dynamic because obviously the user's computer is going to have a different disk name. So to fix that, we could do ns username, username, which basically makes it more dynamic. And as you can see, it works again. So yeah, this is just the very, very basics of, you know, of its future implication and use cases. But for now, this is enough to show that you could actually run Python or not Python, but you could run uh, terminal commands in Swift, in your Swift Mac OS app. And let me drag this over. This is a sneak peek of my GitHub repo. I was using it for executing a, a script over here. You can see that I was going into this folder and then running Python at this path. And then also come in here and ex executing this Python file. So this could be useful when you have to execute, I don't know, other, other Python files or just other executions in general in your macOS app for your app to function. So I just found that it was a pretty, pretty interesting use case. But yeah, okay. And for example, if that person, let's say they have Anaconda installed, you could also obviously change this to their username like so, and et cetera, et cetera. So this is obviously very basic. Just wanted to get you started. And there's a lot of things that you could build over here. And obviously, oops. I was printing this to show you that it actually works, but to actually like execute the command, just remove the print statement, obviously. But usually, I like to duplicate it just to make sure that you know it's running. So I usually have two, like so. But it's completely up to you. And yeah, that is about it. Shows a very basic example of how this can be implemented in your macOS app. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.